Okay, welcome back to another video. What I want to do is illustrate some of my tips and tricks to getting the most out of your pressure washer. Useful tips so that you don't become frustrated and you find this thing collecting dust in your garage rather than you actually getting it and using it because it can be frustrating if you have never used one before. The biggest problem is managing your outlets, your inlets. So with an electric pressure washer, you have three things to manage versus two if you're talking about a gas powered pressure washer. Yes, I realize the lighting is horrid today. It's about 11 a.m. and the sun is kind of behind me. My apologies, but um, in working with the natural environment, there's all these endless moving uh, parts in which to operate around. In comparison to a gas powered pressure washer, you have two things to worry about. You've got the inlet, which feeds the water supply to your pressure washer, plus you have the wand that's going to be the outlet. So you have two things there, even if you have a gas powered. With an electric pressure washer, you obviously need some force of current called electricity. So you're gonna add a third element to the equation. Not a big deal, but it can become cumbersome if you do not set up the uh, situation and that's what I want to lead with is setting that up so that you have better user experience rather than a frustrating user experience. Once again, what you're about to do is work. We don't want to add to that work. We want it to be less work, not more work. Okay, so I've got everything attached. Once again, three elements. I've got my electrical cord coming out of my garage, little black cord here. Got my water supply line coming out the side of the house over here. And then I've got my outlet, which is my pressure washer wand here. So it is plugged in, but I have not turned the machine on. Why is that? Because you want to prime the pump first. What that means is you have water that's essentially delivered to the machine, but now you have all the internal components plus this uh, 15 foot hose that's barren. It's arid, there's nothing in it. So you want to prime it. I have my 25 degree fan pattern tip attached to it. So what I do is I just re pre depress the trigger nozzle and allow the water now to prime the pump before I turn the power on. And you will hear it to kind of um, uh, gurgle as the air is released and now you have complete water going through it. Not a huge requirement, but it's just going to decrease the frustration if you don't prime it first and then you attempt to turn the power on and then you instantly pull the trigger thinking that suddenly you're just going to get water coming out the end magically without priming it first. So prime it first and then you're good to go. The power switch is right on the front. What that did is the, the pump initially energized or pressurized that water in the internal components. Now you're good to go. And you hear it wind down. So that's the cool thing about electric pressure washers versus gas powered pressure washers is that when you're not using it, A, the, all the moving components are not in use, which is gonna save uh, on the long term. And you don't hear a bunch of annoying noise called a gas powered engine running continuously because on a gas powered engine, you're not gonna run and shut that on and off each and every time. This does it automatically for you, one of the winning attributes when it comes to an electric powered pressure washer. On, off. Yes, you hear it wind down, but that's what, a second and a half approximately. So second point is, well, it's really the first point, which is more about managing your situation called the hoses. So the biggest, most cumbersome one will be your water line because that will be the heaviest and it's delivering all the volume of water, which then translates, pressurizes, um, speeds up, creates velocity out this wand here. So this will be the most problematic uh, when you're trying to move the pump itself. This will be the most problematic when you're actually using it, but this really becomes a non-issue which is, if you saw my first video, when you hook this up, I recommend that you lay it out first so it's flat, so you don't have all those coils in it before you use it. So now it's just one nice coil out here and I can use it and I'm not gonna worry about it kinking up. 
just when I answer enough questions, there's always going to be another follow-up question. Typically, there's going to be 100 follow-up questions. So this has uh, rotating wheels, meaning they swivel 360 degrees, but they also rotate and roll this way. You can lock them. Each wheel is capable of being locked. My driveway has a subtle incline to it, so I want this to not roll down while I'm using it. But that's where you have to decide that winning balance between being able to move your pressure washer while you're using it and having it remain in place if it becomes a problem. Only you can decide that based on your situation. Because this is so light and compact, it's very easy to reposition as needed this way. So you'll notice that I have my hose that's been laid out. It's not kinked up. So I can go from, let's say I'm working on the front of my car. I've got plenty of length here in my, my hose and I can pressure washer the front end of my car. I can also come back here, pressure washer the back end of my car. So you can position your pump in the middle of your working area, only you have to figure out what works for you because I'm actually going to clean all four corners of my car as in the wheels and tires, I'm going to have to get on the other side of the car. This will be problematic in this moment because this hose is not long enough to wrap around the entire car. Therefore, you're going to be required to remove this. So what I do is I section, in this particular case, my car in half, the front half versus the back half. So I position the pressure washer up here. Here my washer is stationary in back of my car. Now I can take this wand and I can go from the right rear tire to the left rear tire very easily. I can also pull this. Now I actually have the wheels locked. So this is why I prefer having the cords semi laid out prior so that you can manage the moment. So I can drag this if I want to because it's so light. I don't actually have to unlock the wheels because I don't want it to roll down my driveway. So if I want to simultaneously clean the back wheel and then decide, wait a minute, I'm gonna clean the front wheel. I just drag this right here and now I can clean the front wheel. Then since the wheels are locked, I don't want to unlock them individually. I'm going to pull it over here and you'll notice that I keep the outlet so I can pull it that way and I can bring it that way so the hose does not get kinked up. I also kind of keep the electrical cord and the water cord or the water supply line in tandem so I can pull them together. Now whether, I don't know, I'm sure there'd be some disclaimer about how you're not supposed to pull it that way because the threads might come loose, which really is just not a problem. This is such a lightweight machine. So I can pull it that way, easily pick it up, reposition it, now attack the other side. So that's my main point is just mapping it out a little bit, using a little strategy before you get started. Um, essentially, so you become less frustrated, not more frustrated. What I want to do is illustrate the fan patterns. I'm trying to pick a dark background so you can see. This is the 25%, the green. You see that? You see that? So once again, as you remain in control, right at that point where I pulled away, that's kind of where you approach that danger zone. So that's where some caution should be applied, which is you don't ever want to point this point blank at something until you've assessed how the appropriate distance should be. So just note that. Um, and FYI, yes, you keep the power on the entire time that you're using it. You don't have to keep turning this power on and off uh, in case, I, I know someone's gonna ask out there. Now, since the, the, the water is constantly on, the power is constantly on. When I replace the nozzle in the interim, it's really a non-issue because the power is controlled right here at the trigger. So I release the quick release um, tip here. I simply pull back on that brass collar. I pull it out. Now, as illustrated before in my other video, 
is it's got this cool little receiver things on the end, attachment points, so I can pick a different nozzle. So let's go with the black, which I believe is the soap. Like if you have, it's got a little soap tank here. If you want to add. The goal of that is to kind of create a foaming action um, because it mixes with your uh, soap detergent that you put in the tank. Do you have to put something in there? No, you do not. You can use straight water coming out of this machine. That's not a requirement. It's just if you add it, it's going to naturally blend with it. So that's the foamer uh, black. This, uh, the uh, orange, tangerine, whatever color you want to call this, it's a 15%. If you change these out, you're gonna notice the change in velocity and the change in power. So your ability to keep your hand close to that nozzle point is going to change based on the nozzle type. The tighter that fan power, or the tighter that fan pattern is, the more intense that pressure and velocity is going to be. So therefore, you're gonna to have to apply increasingly more caution the more narrow that fan tip goes. So that was 15%, which is kind of a good winning balance also. I just personally prefer the uh, 25 or the 15. Really, I fluctuate between those two. Now the red, red is uh, appropriately marked red because red represents danger. So this is the zero tip. I don't even want to get my hand in front of that thing, especially at point blank range. So zero tip, that is really going to produce some serious power. In fact, I can annihilate all the spider webs on the bush uh, right next to me from, what's that, six feet away. I could probably shoot that camera right over from about 10 feet away, which I am not going to do. So just know, That's got some serious power. I'm gonna illustrate some areas on my driveway so that you can hopefully see. Here I have some paint. Uh, this is what I was just shooting a moment ago, but here is still some residual paint from who knows whatever. Um, if that's showing up, which it's not. So right here, let me turn this camera a little bit. So right here, right there. Yeah. So zero tip, zero, whatever you want to call it. Want well, to know how strong that is? That's actually breaking up some of the cement because now I can see that the texture is different. So yes, it removed the paint, but it's so strong that it's actually going to literally wear away or break away, shoot away some of that um, cement, which is pretty extreme. So let me switch the tips to the tangerine-esque 15%. And let's see what this will do. Now you might have noticed how that engine or the motor wanted to kind of, I don't know what you would even describe that as. What happens is uh, there's a little interruption in the supply line. So that has to do with bleeding the line, primering it first. So if that happens to you and you start losing power out of here, which is pretty normal with every machine I've ever used, just back off the trigger for a moment. Uh, somehow you just got some little air in the, in the line. But what I'm noticing with this 15% is that that's the winning balance because it's gonna remove these stains without removing the cement.
Nonetheless, just know that this is where you maintain control. You have choice of nozzle tips, and then you have the ability to go in hot or back off for more safety, less velocity, less pressure. Now, let's say you're done with your project. It's time to put it away. So you turn off the power right there, turn it off. Now, when I uh, depress the trigger, it releases a subtle amount of built up pressure, but the water continues to flow because I have not turned off the water supply at the house. That is what you do next. You turn that off, you disconnect, it's pretty straightforward. Let me see if I can teach you a couple add-ons here. So I've disconnected the power line, I've turned off the water, I have not disconnected anything from this. So what I want to do now is just release the power that's naturally built up in the garden hose itself. And this will continue to just release the power or release the pressure and trickle out. You can decide how much you do or don't want to do that. Point is, is the more you release that pressure, the less uh, spray you're going to get as you release or as you um, unscrew the fittings. So here I am, I'm going to unscrew the hose. So if I had a bunch of pressure built up in the hose still and I did not release it there, as I turn this, it's going to start spraying out. Well, because I released enough pressure, I'm not going to get a bunch of spray out on unwanted areas. So that's disconnected. Now I'm going to disconnect the pressure hose itself. Very easy to do, pull it out. I'm going to disconnect it from the gun, the same thing. Very easy, pull it out. What I want to do is take the nozzle off each time. Now what I do is I give it a little shot with WD-40 uh, just to keep it, well, WD-40, WD literally stands for water dispersing. So it's really not a true lubricant. It disperses water. Um, it's like a rust inhibitor. That's what I use it for. I'm going to put it back in there. Maybe I'm going to shoot a little on this. Do that. You don't have to do it every time. You'll, you'll do it as needed. And then if you really want this to be totally compact, but you'll notice that it's still dripping if that in fact shows up. So I release the trigger as holding it upright. So now gravity can pull that water down, empties out all the water. I disassemble this with this little quick, <laughs> I shouldn't call it quick. I still have to turn it. This semi quick release threaded nozzle. I'll undo that. That makes this ultra compact. So here on the side, you've got two receiver points, one for that, one for this, bam. Now this thing, now when you coil up a hose, I know there's many ways to do hose, a cord, whatever, there's many theories. So what I like to do is train any cord that I'm gonna have to use in the future. I wanna train it so that it performs how I want it to. I want to train it so that it goes into submission each time. Hey, Nestor. So this is the winning combination size for me, which I can then just hang on the side like that. So let's talk about the power cord because this will be the longest, 35 feet. Now what I do, and once again, there's many ways of doing it. The goal is to how to wind this up efficiently but also so that next time you use it, you're not wrestling with it and getting it wadded up into a big rat's nest of a frustrating moment. So new cords tend to be already um, kind of kind of preset because they've been packaged up very tightly. So when you get it out, it's not really going to be the easiest thing to work with. So I will lay it in the sun, let it absorb the UV uh, radiation, heat up, and it becomes soft and more malleable, more workable. I can train it. And how I train it is I know that I want the cord to, you know, be about that big like that. So I just simply, and what I'm doing is I'm pulling out the length I want, which makes the loop that I want, but I'm subtly rotating it with my two fingers. And I know you think this is trivial, but it will save you time and energy. And what I'm really trying to do is save you frustration because if you coil this up properly, and this is where you have to train your cords, kind of like children, you gotta train them. 
And I know some of you are going to be like, oh, wow, what a mean dad. That guy must be, runs his house like a dictatorship. Well, whatever. Anyhow, so the goal is to loop that so that they, they're sequential or it's linear, meaning back stays in the back, front stays in the front, so that when I pull this off next time, I can grab this end, throw it down, and my cord comes out very naturally without wadding up or getting into a rat's nest. So that's why I do it that way. Because like I said, there's many ways to do it, but if you get into the groove, and I do it clockwise, which matters not, it's probably gonna be based on whether you're right-handed or left-handed or maybe how the cord was naturally. If it wants to give you some resistance, I just flip it, kind of be more and more aggressive to it and keep like that. So once again, sequentially, linear, whatever you want to call it, back stays in the back, front towards the front. Now I'm good to go, I can put it away. Next time I just grab it, throw it on the ground, pick this up, walk wherever I need to, and I have just eliminated some frustration in my life. Now I can easily put this where I want to in the garage, and next time I think about wanting to clean something, I'm not overwhelmed by the thought of, oh my gosh, I gotta wrestle with a 40 pound Sun Joe electric pressure washer. Yes, it has wheels on it, which by the way, are not very good. There's a reason it has wheels on it, because it's heavy and you're not gonna be able to pick that up very easily. But this, and you don't have to, you know, be all, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger about it. So you can pick it up however it makes sense to you. But it doesn't come to be more compact than that, which that's why I say it's a winning balance between size, uh, performance, and cost. With that said, leave me your comments below. I wanna know if you've actually owned one of these and if you've tested it yourself and what your thoughts are. Or if I made a compelling argument or case for this particular pressure washer, always check the uh, show more box below because there it will take you to my website where I elaborate in greater detail on the nuances and tricks and tips that I suggest when maximizing your user experience when it comes to your choice in a pressure washer. With that said, oh, and don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Yeah, literally right now, hover over, give it a thumbs up. We will see you on the next video. In the meantime, stay safe, be healthy, my friend. We'll see you then.